Hey everybody, it's Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up as I give a recap of the final episode of How to Get Away with Murder, Season 6, Episode 15, entitled Stay. This is it, the final episode. It's all coming up next. <gasps> it's Bunny. <laughs> a series of several gunshots and we see that a crowd is running in panic from it all and Annalise's mother on the inside is screaming is she okay where is Annalise where is she we then rewind to a timestamp of three days prior the time and point where Annalise is reacting to Bonnie telling her that she told Frank the truth about his murder Tegan tries to bring some reasoning and said, clearly this is the governor, clearly she did this. But Annalise says that we have to find Frank and remember that I can't prove a conspiracy theory in court. Hannah's lawyer is telling someone over the phone that the situation has been categorized as a homicide. Frank then pops up in the vehicle requesting more information about his mother. Bonnie questions Laurel if she knows where Frank's located and Laurel says no and she wants to let Bonnie know that you know what I always thought that you and Frank belonged together. Annalise wasn't the one that kept Frank and I together. You were and that she understood that all they both wanted was a family at the end of the day. Laurel's dad is giving his testimony about Laurel. And he explains that since her teenage years, she always had lying behavior. But Annalise gets the question of action sustained. And the prosecutor asks if he thinks that the governor or the FBI had anything to do with his son's death or if they communicated actions of ill will towards Annalise Keating. And he says no. The real enemy is Tegan and Annalise. They have always conspired against me. And the judge, judge directs the jury to disregard the last statement, and she directs the prosecuting attorney to meet her in the chambers. The crew meets up, and Michaela says that, of course, that Laurel's dad is collaborating with the governor to get a lesser sentence. It's obvious. And Connor says, you know, can you believe that Laurel is upset with her dad because he's lying? But if you think about it, we're doing the same thing. Maybe one of us should tell the truth. And Oliver and Michaela disagree. And Michaela says, remember that if you say anything, you're going to kill the immunity of your husband. Remember that. Plus, longer jail time. He also tells Michaela that he's wondering why she doesn't have any guilt about lying. And since she doesn't, she's a psychopath because she should feel that guilt. Tegan gives the bad news that the prosecution has a surprise witness. And Annalise says that the witness is Wes. It has to be Wes because he gave a confession, remember? Tegan says, calm down. Let's not jump to conclusions. Let's just stay calm. We go back to another shot of the shooting and we get more clues. We see that it's not Laurel or Tegan that is shot. After the shots ring out, Laurel tells the driver to leave now, right away. Michaela and Connor talk. And Michaela wants to inform Connor that Solomon made her agreement solid and she's not going to serve any jail time. And Connor tells her, you're not going to be able to live with yourself. It's going to eat you alive. And Michaela goes on to express that my childhood was not easy. My uncle put cigarette butts out on me. My family was abusive. And, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's just only one piece of things that happened to me. I'm not going to jail because I worked really hard to get where I am. And who I am today is what I'm going to live by. This is the life that I want to live. So I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing. And that's it. Phil and Frank continue to talk in the car. And he says, look, all I have is some information about a safe deposit box, a copy of the will, and that's it. And I don't know what else to give you. And if you don't let me go, people are going to be suspicious because I'm supposed to be at my next location in 20 minutes. And if I'm not there, they're going to call the cops and give them your name. And Frank says, well, if they know my name, 
then that means that they know about me. So you either tell me what I need to know or your wife and kids won't be so lucky. The governor finally gets her chance on the stand and says that she never ordered a hit on Nate or anything else and she doesn't have anything to do with Xavier's death or any of this conspiracy theory mess that's going on. Frank arrives to the courthouse and he looks defeated, sad, and deranged, and Annalise can read it all over his face. During a break, Anna and Frank talk privately, and Anna just wants him to confirm that you didn't kill Hannah. Please don't kill, tell me that you killed Hannah. And he says that I wouldn't do that. That wouldn't make any sense. And I can't believe that the info was hidden from me so long. And all I wanted to do was make you happy. Sam knew who I was and he hid it from me and he used it against me. And Anna tells him that don't blame yourself. Everything will be okay. Sam hid it from you because he was hiding it from himself. He wasn't, he wasn't sure who he was. Then Frank slowly hands her a USB and Anna wants to know what is this and frank says this is how you're gonna win back in court anna asked the governor were you upset with me because i won the class action suit against you and do you know xavier castillo the governor denies all claims and says no i've already said that i don't know these people anna then asks her if she knows a person named annalise keaton and the governor pauses, but then she says, no, I don't know who this is. And Anna says, this is my late husband's sister. And the governor says, once again, I don't know who that is. And Anna says, well, why did Hannah record herself saying, didn't you see the governor on TV saying that the late Nate Sr. got killed? The governor killed him. And I wanted Annalise to go down for my brother, but I didn't want a lot of people hurt in the process. And Anna wants to know if Hannah doesn't know you, how are they speaking so intimately about you over this phone conversation? Hannah and Xavier, you, you claim you had nothing to do with it. How is that possible? Are you responsible for Nate Sr.'s death? The judge makes sure that Annalise is not badgering the witness and she stops the questioning and the governor gives a look to Anna as if she's completely stooped. The FBI wants to tell Nate that they've reached out to the attorney general concerning his father's wrongful death suit and Nate just wants them to prosecute the governor. That would be the right thing to do. And they said, well, before making a final decision, please look at our final offer. And Nate looks at what's on the inside of the paper. Nate just says, you know what? You just want to make sure that I don't pull a Laura Castile on the stand and change my story all of a sudden. Tegan finds out that they offered Nate $20 million. They then see Gabriel in the hallway and Tegan says, look, I told you, the surprise witness is Gabriel. Laura wants to talk to Tegan and make a deal. And she says that there's lots of land that's in my name that that father, my father left to me. And look, my father killed my mother. Which So what makes you think that he won't want to hurt us? And Tegan says, but you hurt me. Now you must save yourself and leave me alone. And Laura wants her to know that, look, if you do what I say and just hear me out, this offer will help the both of us. Annalise goes over her possible questions that she'll ask Nate while he's on the stand. And she gets upset just thinking about everything that he's done in the past and she stops herself in frustration. Bonnie walks in and catches Frank trying to leave and Frank just says that he's upset because Bonnie told him such sad information and he tells her at least Anna did the right thing by not telling me but you, you told me why. She says, I didn't want to move forward knowing anything, moving forward and holding on to lies. And he tells her that one day I'll forgive you, but just not now. He gives her a kiss and leaves. Frank meets up with Gabriel and it's evident that Gabe has plans to leave because the apartment is empty. 
And he says, look, here's 87 grand. Take it and leave. Just don't testify against Annalise. Sam killed a girl and you know how I know? Because he had me do it. Get away from this or Sam will destroy you like he did everyone else's. Oliver pleads with Connor to find a way to get some type of information to make sure that he gets the same plea deal that Michaela got. And he tells him, I have several books here to help you with your research. Just please move forward and do what you have to do to make sure that you don't receive any more jail time. Then Connor gets a call from Lanford. The FBI informed that the time of his plea deal has gotten better. No jail time and he have, he'll have probation. Nate is on the stand. And the prosecution says, you were arrested for Sam's murder. Why? And he explains that, hey, I'm the boyfriend. And it's always the boyfriend that's the prime suspect. And I was framed by Annalise. So I thought. But Annalise is not the one who framed me. It was Hannah. And of course, the FBI and the prosecution, they look puzzled as to why he's changing his story that he agreed to. He says, the person that framed me was Hannah. She wanted Anna to be connected to Sam's murder, but it was evident how she did it by using the Castillos and the governor. You and Lanford also offered me a deal of $20 million to cover and the FBI agent working for the Castillos to murder Asher Millstone. After a day in court, Anna wants to know, Nate, why did you do what you did? You gave up $20 million. He says, no, I'll get my $20 million. I just want you to make things right and have some accountability for things that you have done. And I did what I did to make things right. And he hands her a piece of paper and he says, here, this is Wes's confession. And it was located with Xavier, with his body. And he turns to Annalise and he says his final goodbye. Goodbye, Annalise. Connor walks in and he sees that Oliver is making him two drinks. And he says, well, what are we celebrating? And Oliver says, um, we're celebrating the fact that, um, and he really can't give an answer. And Connor says, you never went to the library to get information on how I could get a new plea deal, did you? You went to Lanford and got a new one. You got a new plea deal. And Elise burns Wes's confession. And Connor continues to say, Oliver, you wanted to testify against her as long as I got a new deal. And then we see Anna's mom and her sister pop up over her house. And they tell her, we wanted to be here to see you win. Oliver says, look, they wanted me to say that I deleted some dirty photos on her computer of her and Wes and her hard drive. And I'll say whatever I can to protect you, but Connor isn't having it. And he gives him divorce papers. And he says that you are willing to testify and lie and send Laurel to jail and leave a child without a mother. I want a divorce because I deserve to go to jail. And you don't want that, but I understand that you have to do something right and live in the truth. And Oliver says, look, I did what I did because I love you. Tell me right now that you love me. Connor looks him in the eye and says, I don't love you. And Oliver is just drawn to tears. Anna has a talk with her mom before bed and says, you know what? Maybe I don't deserve to win. I've done a lot of bad things in my life and maybe I deserve to lose, you know? I have to give this closing statement that will convince them to let me go free. And her mom explains to her that this whole situation is not in her control and all that she could do is her best in court. The prosecution wants the jury to know that Annalise has a profession of getting people off and not getting jail time of murderers, rapists, and convincing the jury that they don't belong to go to jail when they really, really do. 
And Anna says in her closing statement that I'm not a victim. I'm not perfect. I'm not an angel. And I chose to come in my form today, all natural, all me, to be in my truth. I've worn a mask my entire life. I've faked accents. I've married a man because I thought that that was the image that I was supposed to betray. I am a black, bisexual woman. I'm brilliant. I'm smart. I'm a survivor. But one thing that I'm not is a mastermind behind all of these murders. I'm not a murderer. And I am at the mercy of the jury. Tegan talks to Annalise while the jury deliberates. And she says, I can't keep this back any longer, Annalise. I love you. And I want to make you happy. And I'm going to try my best to be there for you. And Annalise says, you know, that's wonderful. And I wish I could make you happy, but somebody else is going to make you happy. It just isn't me, and I don't deserve you. Bonnie comes in to let them know that the jury has reached a verdict. And the jury lets them know that on count one, not guilty. First degree murder of one person, not guilty. First degree murder, murder of this person, not guilty. First degree of another person, not guilty. And they name all of these names in a row. And all of the names are not guilty when it comes to first degree murder. Annalise hugs everyone, her mother, Bonnie, and several other people. When she gets outside, she's speaking to the media. We then see Connor. He gets handcuffed to be taken away to jail. And Connor hands over his ring to clarify that their marriage is over. And Oliver just can't accept it as they handcuff him and take him away. Michaela tries to console Oliver, but he tells her that should have been you. Michaela tries to call Laurel, but then she finds out that the number is either disconnected or Laurel has blocked her from her phone. Laurel's dad is killed in jail. And as Laurel puts her son into the vehicle, she tells him we're going away somewhere safe. We don't have to be afraid of the boogeyman anymore. Anna suggests to the media that the governor should be prosecuted and that should be the next steps with all of the evidence that we know. And we hear shots ring out. Frank, as we go to coming back from commercial break, Frank is slowly approaching from the crowd. And Bonnie can see that something is wrong. So she tries to make her way through the crowd as Frank makes his way up the steps. Frank then draws his weapon and we see that he is shooting at the governor. Unfortunately, he's shot from returning fire and so is Bonnie. We then have a series of shots together that help us get the idea of the conclusion of the show. As we go to the funeral, we see that the funeral is future tense and that Laurel and a lot of other people are older. It's very evident that the imagery that we see of Wes is Laurel imagining his presence there at the funeral. Annalise's mother passes away. We see that time when she's mourning her mother. We then see a series of Annalise's love lives. We see different people holding her hand as time move, moves forward. We then see that Frank has invested in a foundation to help with legal justice. Connor and Oliver are together after the years. We see Michaela getting sworn in as a judge. And we see children offset to the side, which can give us the idea that she had children. Gabe takes the money and we can conclude that he's moving on with his life. Now we do see shots of Wes on a bicycle going to a university and he's addressing the class saying, hello everyone, welcome to this course, we're going to start and I would like to call this class as my mentor would describe how to get away with murder and he says that his name is Christopher Castillo which we can conclude that maybe he went into some sort of protective custody 
and that at one point he did move on in his life. And that was the end of the episode. And we can also guess that this is Laurel's son. I absolutely enjoyed this series and I know that there will be several debates about the ending of the show when it comes to Wes. Was this a idea of maybe how he would have lived his life as a professor? But I don't think so because he had this accent. So maybe the accent was to disguise who he was and he's taking on a persona of a totally different person. Um, I know a lot of people are crushed about Bonnie and Frank. But if you think about it, the life that they lived, all of the cover-ups, all of the things in their lives, it was just sad that it came into fruition that that would be their end. I really think Frank was exhausted from his life, from everything that he experienced, and so was Bonnie. I think it was really sad that they couldn't move forward in their lives I was really cheering for them to have some sort of normalcy, something that they that they would consider to be normal. I thought that was really, really sad. And I was completely shocked when we saw that it was the governor that was the one that really got shot and not Annalise. It was fulfilling to see Anna move on with her life and live a little and not have to worry. So what this show did do, whether we agree with it or not, whether it was sad or not, it gave us a conclusion. And it gave us hope and understanding that in one point in everyone's life, everybody had a chance to move on and get past such a horrific experience. Or should I say experiences? <laughs> Were there things that weren't answered were there certain things that you had still had questions that you were wondering and thought hey they didn't go over this or they didn't go over that let me know in the comments to me it was a plausible realistic conclusion um a lot of people get used to fairy tale happy endings but this was very 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 realistic um Michaela's character some people would call her selfish but she was so traumatized from her childhood she was willing to do any and everything to make sure that she was successful and we do see that she reached her goal in becoming a judge and that she did have a family of some sort um Oliver the fact that he was so saddened and crushed the fact that Connor had to serve jail time was really really sad although he felt it in his heart that he deserved jail time because he was guilty of several things it's the case of karma coming in ways in which you don't expect which was something that they wrote into this series and I thought it was done well considering how much time and how many seasons that we're trying to write wrap up. Let me know what you think. I do have a saying that I say on my channel, when one show ends, another one takes its place. So get ready, you guys. We do have in June the fifth and final season of Greenleaf and so much more. That's just one show. We just keep going and going and going. And I'm so happy that you guys were able to have this experience with me and you guys tuned in to the recaps and the reviews. Subscribe hit that notification bell so you don't miss any post and also follow me on instagram at the same profile name official bun underscore e that's it y'all guys have a good one check out other shows before more seasons come back on tv so you can get caught up go to the playlist and binge watch until next time i'll see you and stay safe bye